Good morning. I know people are still trickling in, but we're going to go ahead and get started because it's that time. Um, first of all, I want to say welcome to any visitors that we have that may be visiting today. Um, if you would like, there should be some cards on the back of the pews that you can fill out your information and let us know a little bit more about you. And as the offering uh, plate is passed around, you can just drop that in the offering plate. Um, also, I want to say a big thank you to the Reverend Bob, who is visiting with us today. I don't see him, but I know he's around here somewhere because I talked to him. <laughs> and uh, we always appreciate him um, celebrating with us. Um, and he has been a, <clears throat> a good uh, backup for us as while, while we're, we're working on uh, getting a new priest. And um, on that note, we do expect the profile committee is wrapping up their hard work, and I do want to say a big thank you to those on the profile committee, especially Bill Abbott, who has been working so hard to get, get our profile together for us. Um, and um, because he has the complicated electronic part, which is, which is always a little tricky because everything is online nowadays. Um, so we should be uh, ready to um, start taking... Uh, nominations for search committee members um, in the next couple of weeks. And so um, be prayerfully thinking about whether you would like to serve on the search committee to help us find a new rector um, or nominating someone to serve on the search committee to look for a new rector. Um, uh, just a couple of announcements. Uh, um, on Sunday, January the 22nd, we're gonna have a chili cook-off. So if you have a, a favorite family recipe or if you just want to um, bring something that might go with chili like, you know, uh, cheese or fritos or um, some side dish, potato salad, something like that, um, there will be a sign-up sheet. I didn't see one, but I'll make sure we get a sign-up sheet to put in the parish hall or you can always... Um, email me or Kim at the church office and let them let us know what you would like to bring or, or if you're going to bring chili. Um, we will have our annual parish meeting on January 29th. Um, would love to see a full house on the 29th. Um, we will also be um, commissioning our new vestry members as well as um, our um uh, delegates for council which is in february and so um please join us on february i mean on january the 29th after church for the annual meeting um for those of you who um have not filled out a pledge card you still have time the vestry is um most likely gonna um uh, finalize the budget for 2020 i know we're already in 2023 but we're most likely going to finalize the budget for 2023 um at the vestry meeting on the 17th I believe it is that that's the 17th and so if you haven't gotten your pledge card in please do so um, it just really helps us on our bottom line to be able to try to figure out um, uh, a rector compensation package for our new rector and we certainly want to you know make sure that's um, at the right um, the right number so we can get a quality candidate um, and then Let's see. Also, just a, just to save the date, on April the 23rd, Bishop uh, Ryan will be with us, and we'll have uh, confirmations. If there's if you know of anybody that needs to be baptized, we can certainly do that on that day. Um, so uh, just save the date, April 23rd. Um, Chris. Chris has some announcements. I know you think I'm always asking you for something, and I guess that is indeed true. Um, this is time for the Super Bowl of Caring. Uh, we have done this multiple years here at St. Mark's. Um, there are, uh, there's a bin out here in the Narthex and two in the Parish Hall. Uh, it's even more important this year than it's been in the past. Um, I read a lengthy article about the Super Bowl of Caring, and because of inflation and because of the pandemic, food banks around the country are in big trouble. And so this is our opportunity to grab a couple of cans of soup and pasta and please, please help us over the next few weeks with the Super Bowl of Caring. 
Uh, the other thing is our annual collection of calendars and planners and date books that we take to uh, nearby um, nursing homes and senior facilities. There's a basket for those out there. If you're anything like me, I get a boatload of those in the mail and I don't know what to do with them all. Please end up donating them to, to our cause. Um, in the Kids Kingdom class today, we started a new unit on NOAA still working in the uh, Old Testament. Uh, Ruthie's smiling at me here. And show us, Noah, what you made today. Shake it. Noah, shake it. Yes, what is it? It's a rain stick, right, to help remember all of the rain and Noah and coming up to the flood. So we're back at Kids' Kingdom, and we're back at Christian Formation for the 6th through 12th graders as well. Thank you. Are there any other announcements for the good of the people? Okay, thank you. Let us worship the Lord.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God. The Amen. Good morning, everyone. Happy New Year again. Today we celebrate the feast of the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River. Uh, and so the readings, of course, will be about that and the homily a little bit. But we are going to uh, kind of take liberties with our menu this morning, as it were. Uh, and so when it comes to the time around the creed after the homily, we're going to do the renewal of baptismal promises together, recalling our own baptism. So what you'll need is a prayer book. Um, and they should be stuffed in the pews around. If you don't have one, you can share with someone. But uh, when, you get, when we get to that part, uh, I will announce the pages. Also want to personally welcome uh, folks who may be visiting, uh, maybe here for the first time, or uh, friends of ours who uh, have come back again uh, from the Friendswood area. So we welcome uh, the Isaac family. Good, always good to pray with you guys. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us pray. Amen. 
Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan, proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may have the covenant that they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Be seated, if you, if you would, for our readings. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> our first lesson of today is from Isaiah. Here is my servant, who I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the streets. A bruised reach he will not break and dimly burn the wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faith or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to his people upon it and the spirit to walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prisons who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name, my glory I give to no other, nor praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm of today is Psalm 29, and we will be reading responsibly by half verse. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in beauty and holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters, the God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of thunder. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. He makes Lebanon split like a calf. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire, and the voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees wither. And in the temple of the Lord, the Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The second lesson of today is from Acts. <clears throat> Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does not want what is right and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judah, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anoints Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how we want to now, how we went now about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They may put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but who, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him and that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins throughout his name, through his name. The l word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Saints of the Lord, 
This is a reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan River to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on Jesus. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The gospel, the good news of the Lord. Praise to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Have a seat, if you would. So I, I was debating about whether I should start like this, because it's kind of profane. I mean profane in the way of not being sacred. Uh, I have saw a meme on uh, Facebook. Some of you have seen it, because I know you uh, saw mine. When I... Uh, sent it forward. Uh, and there was this, this picture of Jesus in the river, well, picture of Jesus, how we picture Jesus, you know, white and long hair and all that stuff, in the river Jordan with this guy, and he was coming up out of the water, and Jesus says in the meme, he says, you really don't have to drown me in this water. And the guy who was baptizing him said, but I'm John the Baptist. Maybe you were looking for John the Episcopalian. <laughs> and the reason I start that way is, honestly, I want to talk a little bit about water uh, and about baptism. My, my wife and I, uh, and I'm sure some of you have visited uh, Israel and have experienced some time at the River Jordan. When we see the River Jordan, uh, sort of at the north, not sort of, at the north, and, and then the, uh, I mean, the uh, uh, coming into the Sea of Galilee and then flowing down to the Dead Sea, where 
The Sea of Galilee is this gorgeous, really beautiful uh, lake, a uh, big lake of water and uh, full of life. Uh, and, and at the other end of, of the Jordan is the Dead Sea, which is just literally f f not full of, it's just full of death. I mean, you, can't sw you can swim in it, but you can't go under the water, you can't drink it, nothing, nothing lives in it, no, there's no fish or anything like that. So we have these variations on the theme of water that Jesus was quite, uh, was, uh, uh, quite associated with. And the reason I said is I remember uh, years ago when I was first ordained, I was a missionary in the Philippines. I was actually ordained over there. And I lived on a small island called Biliran. Uh, in, uh, uh, it's now its own province. It used to be in the pr a sub-province of Leyte, if you know where that is, uh, east of Cebu. And, uh, and anyway, small island, uh, we had eight parishes, we had about 180,000 people that lived on the whole island. There were about eight of us who were uh, Franciscan friars, and uh, at that time, the, uh, the median age of the country in the Philippines was uh, under 18, so <laughs> there were a lot of young people which meant there were a lot of babies, which meant there were a lot of baptisms. And uh, I remember on the island, every Saturday we'd ring the bell, you know, and, and people would come for baptism, and sometimes it was 25 as a small number, and I had up to 154 uh, at one time, uh, which was a lot. Um, and their formula is long because it's in Waragin Babunyagan Ko Ikau Ngaran Hanamai Hanana Kanaspi, and it goes on and on. And so it's like a huge production. But what's always striking living there was the was the closeness to nature. We didn't have running water in our homes. Uh, homes. Uh, we didn't have electricity or anything like that. And so we were, you know, we were very, we lived very close to the earth, um, depending on what came out of the sea for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Our menu was always fish and rice for breakfast, and then rice and fish for lunch, and then <laughs> fish and rice for dinner. And so, uh, and sometimes there were no fish. If it was a high t uh, uh, full moon, there were, uh, it was hard to fish. And, but the nature of water, became for me so very important because we, you had to work. You had to really make sure that your supply of water was secure, right? Because it would be easy to, uh, to be sick. Uh, and so when we walked down to the river, it was sectioned off. Um, it was uh, obviously a river that was um, fed by streams uh, and, and it was sectioned off, and the first part was for uh, water that could be drunk, and then the second part might be, I don't remember what it was, but I know it went down the line to where it got where you could do your laundry, and then the, your animals could be washed and do whatever they needed to do in the water, the carabao. Um, and, and in the middle somewhere there you could swim, and it was all sectioned off. The swimming pool, uh, I remember, on the other side of town was just a, a rock that was a natural formation that a, a stream came down into, and the stream kept running, and there was a coconut husk in the bottom of the pool that you would put down there, and then the pool would fill up, and then when you were finished <laughs> swimming, you'd, pull, you'd swim down to the bottom, pull up the coconut, and it would empty. But there was a big sign uh, right next to the pool where the spring came in. It said, don't pee upstream, <laughs> you know? And so water was sacred. And I'm sure in the time of Jesus, it was very much the same thing, that, uh, that importance of going under the water of, of going into baptism fully submerged, remember, I am John the Baptist, not John the Episcopalian, fully submerged and coming up knowing new life. And in the experience of Jesus that we know from the gospel, then that, that, that first and, and formal pronunciation by God's self, 
uh, in the cloud where the, where the spirit comes and, and the gospel says a light's on Jesus, you know, and, and, and he's essentially become the one that we are to follow. If you think about it, there is absolutely no theological reason why Jesus should be baptized. John pronounced that. <laughs> I mean, he said, why are you coming to me? You know, I'm not the one. And Jesus was, was adamant that he was to go into the water. And I'm sure it really wasn't about washing away his sins or joining the Episcopal Church or the kinds of things that we sort of assign to baptism. But it really was about being, uh, being somehow submerged into death and rising again, that first pronunciation of how it was that he was going to connect intimately uh, with his people, us. And, and he did that so that we could do as he did. We see in the second reading uh, in Acts where St. Luke tells us that, you know, Jesus was, was baptized and we know that so that we, so that, and, and then he went about and, and did great things rather than just make it up. Let me read it. Um, he says, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, and he went about doing good things and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And Jesus was baptized to model for us who it is that we should be and be becoming as we say yes to our own baptism, right? That's why he went under the, under the water, not being called to the repentance that John was calling folks into, not being uh, uh, forgiven of his sinfulness, not joining a particular church or anything like that, but simply to say that I am dying and rising again for you and you are to follow me. And, the, and as I recall in the Philippines, the nature of, the sacred nature of water, you know, we do in our sacraments sort of diminish, you know, we have little round things and we say that's bread and we, uh, you know, and we put a little drip of water out of a shell that might be somehow from somebody's kitchen and, and, you know, and the kids are all dressed up in white, and we have all these things that we consider to be important, when what is really important is that that water flows. And somehow, whether you're dunked in it, like I've done many times as well, uh, or whether you're just, you know, got a little drip over your forehead or, or your foot, wherever, that somehow that water flows and joins us, connects us, and, and calls us into the promise that each of us have, the promises that each of us have made in our own baptism, essentially to follow Jesus, as St. Luke tells us, to do as Jesus did. To do as Jesus did, not slap the name title Christian on your, your forehead or get a, you know, whatever, but to do as Jesus did. And so that call into becoming more and more profoundly connected to Jesus. I was walking on the Strand the other day. Uh, my in-laws were in town, and there was a lady with a big Jesus uh, shirt on. And I'm like, I don't know why that stuff turns me off, but it really does. And I'm thinking I'm the one that should be excited about that, but I'm not um, for some reason. And I think as I think about that, it's like I have no need to proclaim by what's on my clothes or dangled around my neck or whatever as jewelry. We proclaim <laughs> Jesus to the world by how it is that we are with each other. And if we have to tell people or wear jewelry about it, not that there's anything wrong with that, I'm not saying that, but if that's the way we do it, then we missed the boat. St. Francis, uh, is tagged with saying, although I can, uh, I'm a lifelong Franciscan, I've never found it in his words, but people make bumper stickers that, you know, Francis said uh, something to the effect that, that, that as a follower of Francis, 
You are to preach always, and if necessary, use your mouth. Which is to say, we preach the gospel by the actions that we perform with each other and among each other. And so as we recommit ourselves to baptism today, I want to take time to kind of slowly walk through our baptismal promises together to recommit ourselves to the profound nature uh, of our own baptismal ritual as followers of Jesus in the Episcopal Church, to allow ourselves time to think and to pray and to recommit to the action that we are called to do as followers of Jesus, as men and women who um, uh, perhaps weren't dunked in the water as Jesus uh, by John the Baptist, but probably baptized by a drop of water on your forehead by somebody like Bob the Episcopalian. <laughs> so I'd invite you to stand up if you would, and we're going to walk through our baptismal promises together, uh, which will uh, take the place of our creed and, and also our prayers of the people. So if you have a, a prayer book, I, I would invite you to open it to page, I believe it's 305. Actually, it's 302. So 302. And I'll walk us through the, does everyone have a, uh, access to a prayer book as you desire? Yeah. The questions. So I invite you to follow uh, with the prayer book and answer the questions if you feel called to do so. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your savior? I do. do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. And, and down uh, toward the bottom, uh, as we are witnesses to each other's commitment, will you who witness these vows do all in your power, especially those of you who are members here at St. Mark's and engaged in each other's spiritual journey, will you do it all in your power to support each other in their life in Christ? We will. We will. On page 304, uh, we always celebrate uh, at a baptism uh, our life together in communion with all Christians in uh, the uh, articulation of the uh, Apostles' Creed. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, in the breaking of the bread at this table, and in the prayers? Will you uh, persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, God help. 
Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, God's help. Will you seek to serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. Prayers for the candidates. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, our Lord, that all of us who are called again today into baptism are called into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, that we may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory. Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters in baptism, may the peace and joy of the Lord be with each and every one of you. And also with Take a moment now to offer each other some sign of your baptismal relationship with Jesus and each other. Okay, peace be with you. Peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace. So uh, do we have any birthdays or anniversaries or other things that people might wish to cast blessing upon? How many years? 23 years? All right. I, I wish it was more. Well, it will be more. <laughs> That's what we're doing here today. We're going to... Make it happen, right? No. <laughs> Let's pray. We give you thanks and we give you praise, Lord, for the gift of love and for the many ways that you call individuals into deep union with each other uh, in, the, uh, in the spirit of your son, Jesus, who reminded us again today uh, of how it is we are. Uh, to be present to each other in justice and peace and in love, especially in this among uh, in this congregation and certainly this couple in the sacrament of a holy matrimony. We bless you for the gift of these your chosen ones uh, among all of us here at St. Mark's. We. Uh, treasure the many ways that they offer their love uh, to each other and model it in how it is that they are with us. We ask, Lord, if it be your will, 
to give them many, many, many more years uh, together in love, uh, and the opportunity to uh, show your gift of love to those uh, with whom they come into contact each day. These blessings we ask in the name of Jesus, your Son, in the power of your Holy Spirit given. Amen. Amen. Happy anniversary. Yeah. <laughs> Many more happy anniversaries. <laughs> Any other? If you are offering your gift at the table and there, remember that your brother or sister has something against you. First, go be reconciled with your brother or sister, then return and offer your gift, Matthew chapter five. them. Yeah. That's perfect. They're already consecrated, but I don't know what they need more. Yeah. Uh, that's enough. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Give to the Lord. Let us together give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused the new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, Father, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this song to proclaim the glory of your name. is he who comes 
comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for your goodness and love, which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, and out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, Father, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ, and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with Mark and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, has sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us be pleased. Hallelujah. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia.
These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of Christ. Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of 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 Christ. The bread of heaven, the body of Christ, 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 the bread of heaven. 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 Can you imagine? That's great. Thank you. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 The body of Christ. The bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Oh, here. Never mind. We got it. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. <laughs> The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Let us pray. Eternal Father, Heavenly Father, given for your sins and for the remembers of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace. Courage to love and serve you. Since in the of heart. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come upon you, remain with you today and forevermore. Amen. Amen. May we baptize from sin, go forth with you a world to win, and thus the Holy Spirit's power to shield us in temptation's hour. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth now in peace and joy to love and serve the Lord and each other. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.